Good evening, Australia. I'm Michael Kazilny. Tough times never last, but tough people do. Thank you very much for watching for all these years. Um, uh, we've gone through a very, very difficult two years and, um, and we're still not there. You know, a lot of people are living with uncertainty. I think that's the take home lesson. We really need to go with the flow and just, you know, make the most of every day because we really don't know where this is going. Um, what I've found over the last uh, few months, uh, not many people are laughing, not many people are smiling, you know. Uh, customer service has gone out the window. Really try to make an effort this year to, to turn that spotlight on the other person and show a bit of loving kindness. A beautiful soul on the couch tonight. She's a white witch and her name is Tina Montgomery. Um, and thank you so much for coming. You're looking amazing and uh, a great um, energy you have. Thank Tina. you. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate you having yeah. me here today. And congratulations on all your success. Thank you. You know, it's not, uh, you're not just beautiful, but you're successful and you run many businesses. But uh, many viewers be intrigued, um, uh, a white witch. It's, um, it's, uh, how did you know? Um, I, probably about 10 years ago, I uh, was at a little market and I'd been looking around and saw some books, Wicca, I didn't really know what Wicca was then, and I sat down with this lady that I've known for years, and she did a reading. She said, Tina, you're, you're, you're a witch. I'm like, oh, that makes sense, but, you know, with herbs and green and outside, outdoors. And I remembered the stall. So after I finished with her, I went back and I bought books on witchcraft, looked into it, and it was pretty much it described how I am and how I practice and how I live my life. So it all started from there, really. Mm, you, you're very much in the moment, you know, and um, uh, very strong intuition. Yeah? Yes, correct. So, so, so what, um, when people come in, you can, um, you've got a good bullshit detector. Yes, I do. I do. do. I read people yeah. and um, I can assess, I feel their energy. Yeah. So like, uh, not with everybody, but with a lot of people. Mm. Um, and I can feel if you're upset or if you're, you know, mm. you're happy or if you're approachable or if you've got, you know, things that are bothering you. That's I look a, at the eyes as well. It's a beautiful um, uh, thing to have. And yeah, there's a saying, isn't there? What you are speaks so loudly, I can't hear what you're saying. You know, what you are speaks so loudly, mm. I can't hear what you're saying. I get that with, I'm a criminal defence lawyer and I get that quite often with clients. They're going, oh no, uh, to be honest, I can pay. You know, and you know straight away there, bro. Correct, 100%. And a lot of people do, a lot of people talk and, you know, what you want to hear, that's what they will say. And a lot mm. of people actually hide behind what they truly are until they're home in their room by themselves. Mm. It's beautiful how you can take it that whole landscape of your life and, and, and help people um, and you've gone through your own difficult times? Yeah, a lot of my life, probably the majority of my life I've gone through a lot that people probably wouldn't endure but that has made me what I am today and I think that also helps me. What type of things? Um, heartache, um, just awful situations in terms, you know, emotionally, physically, a lot of mental abuse. Um, I've been in, yeah, obviously relationships. And, you and know, it's made you the beautiful person you are. Thank you. Because, um, um, and that's true viewers, isn't it? If, if your life is just soft and you get to this age and just a bit of soft life and not much happening, um, you wouldn't uh, really be the person. But I think it's the difficult times that, that create beautiful people, isn't it? Correct, yes. You know, I always find, you know, I speak to people who've, who've had some hard knocks in life, cancer, bankruptcy, mm. maybe multiple divorces, and 
And they're just so authentic. There's nothing further to prove, you know. The thing when I hear people say that, and there's always there's a saying like a tree will shed all of its leaves and come back and bear and look like nothing, but then it blossoms and becomes beautiful. That's and gorgeous. it's the same with us. Mm. Yeah. It's a very judgmental society out there, Tina. And um, yes. I gave up. I gave up the. Uh, the concern for the opinions of other people years ago, you know. Same. I just smashed it on the ground, as I did with the ego. Um, when you tell people you're a white witch, um, you know, you get the, um, you know, the more intelligent people inquiring about it, and, and others would uh, have a bit of a laugh. Yes, they do. How yeah. do you deal with people like that? Um, from a very young age, I was always taught sticks and stones will break my bones, names will never hurt me. And I pass that on to my children and I'm a firm believer. Like, I often believe if people are judging me, it's within themselves. There's something about themselves that they don't like. Exactly. So I don't hold that against them. I take it on board and some people want to challenge me. Um, depending on what mood I'm in, I will listen and, you know, discuss or I just brush it off and that's, so, that's their opinion at the end of the day that's, that's not so on me. true to because a beautiful person who's wholesome and kind they wouldn't backstab would they correct it's, and, and they wouldn't say and the haters i think they will um those sort of people are, um, are psychologically sick mm -hmm. and maybe a bit broken inside and maybe yeah. they're the sort of people who need your help yeah i think so too and i think um i'm very upfront and very honest and a lot of people don't like that but no, i feel that that's you're important. not normal <laughs> I'm not normal either, viewers, you know, but it's the uh, irregular people who have all the fun. There's far too much normal in the world, but n normal is pretty boring, isn't it? Normal is just a picket fence, get married, never do anything else, and then die. Mm. But it's, um, you know, the, yeah, you, you've broken away from the crowd. And, um, and where do you operate from? Where can people find you? Uh, people can find us in Param. We've just recently opened a store there. Which way? Uh, which way? <laughs> and we have a beauty clinic next door. So wow. we've actually incorporated crystals and um, things from the spiritual. We've brought it into the beauty clinic. So we've got two beautiful uh, shops side by side under the one roof. Isn't that amazing? Both men and women? Yes. We're open for men and women. Um, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people come through and it, it looks so far, it's very successful. Anyone that comes in comes back. Which way has a spiritual room? Yes. Um, where we do energetic healings. Um, we did have psychics in there. Hopefully they'll be coming back in soon. At the moment yeah. they're online. What is energetic healing? Uh, for me, myself, energetic healing, um, I have my own way of doing it, but I basically uh, channel, center, and I work with my hands. My hands heat up, work through the body, wherever I find a point that needs more of my energy. Um, I'm just a channel, so I can move and shift and bring in. I get visions. Um, I may get messages. Um, I work with crystals and candles. Um, mm -hmm. And everyone that has come through, I've had a different experience. I've even levitated or felt like I've levitated. My client has too. Um, and everyone walks out and you can see in their eyes in their body that they're refreshed and they may not be recovered because when is anyone really recovered 100% but mm. at that time and place they're feeling better within themselves and they walk out and they're just so happy to be there and come through. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm sure you, you've made many people happy and uh, we'll be back very shortly with this uh, lovely lady on the couch. Tina Montgomery's on the couch, uh, a beautiful lady, uh, found out um, uh, about uh, witchcraft uh, about 20 years ago, you think? Uh, yeah, I would say 20, but I still have um, 20 years I've been practicing, going cool. to psychics and looking, but my first recollection I think would have been six when I was in my bed. And I had someone standing over me and I remember, they say the slander man or, and I slept probably 20 years with my hands under the blanket, wouldn't put them out for a fear mm. until I got to understand, you know, and deal with things a lot better. What are the, uh, some of the special qualities um, that a white witch has, or shall I call them powers, you know, um, a strong intuition? Yeah, very intuitive. Um, have a sense of, for me personally, reading people. Yeah. Um, I just think it's more caring and more able to help people. I manifest. I use my own rituals for myself. It's more for me. I do it more personally, so it's for my personal use. So a lot of people get into relationships, and um, there's always that honeymoon phase, isn't there? People think, "Wow," and then people change. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the true colours come out. But um, I suppose you you were good at uh, predicting that because you can. No, that's maybe... not true. No. Not necessarily because. Um, 
I can I get a sense of how people are, but obviously people change. Mm. And in terms of relationships, when your heart becomes solid to a person, for me in particular, it clouds that judgment of not knowing how the person is. Intuitively, you can understand or you may pick up on things, um, but you just never know where it's going to go. You, you probably get a gut of how it mm. may go. Um, but sometimes you can't. But then for someone else, when you're doing a reading, um, their energies are different. So you mm. can actually pick up and predict that probably better than what you could for yourself. Mm. Over lockdown, a lot of people had problems in their relationships, a lot of split ups. And um, yeah. on the increase, uh, how, how do people move on if they don't want to go back? And uh, how do we get rid of all that junk and all that regret out of our minds? I think when people step out into society a lot more, a lot of the normality will come back. And I feel a lot of problems in the houses at the time is because they never got to spend time with each other. Yeah. Like they're together, but they're living individual lives because they're always working or they're always out yeah. and about. So they got to know each other and, you know, probably got to understand at a different level than what they normally would. So I feel like if they are still together and they go back to the normal life of what they called normal, they'll probably get back together and, you know, things will work out and others will separate and move on. Mm. Like that's probably the journey that they're yeah, on. Yeah, right. It's a, you know, all those lockdowns probably tested a lot of relationships. Oh, they would have for sure. And uh, maybe it sort of ironed out a few of the problems. I don't know whether they would have. Yeah, they could have, but it probably could have brought up a whole lot more as well, mm. you know. <laughs> What do you think has happened to society, you know, like when we look back, um, say, 10, 20 years ago, and we see our grandparents and our parents getting on well, love, respect, and, and their sort of uh, affairs, as soon as there's an argument, people split up, divorce lawyers are cleaning up? I, um, I feel a lot of that, and I could be wrong, is to do with social media. Yes. And the accessibility of people being able to get in contact with another person mm -hmm. um, where they didn't have the means before. Yes. And a lot of it too, like I'm old school, my word is my word. Mm. And you don't get that these days. No. And I think I find that very hard in society and dealing with the social media and dealing with people is that when someone tells me something, I believe them. Mm. And that just doesn't happen anymore. So I think that causes a lot of problem. And, you know, back to when I grew up to what it is today, like I hate to feel what my children need to go through and what they endure Social media, I think, is really, it's great for business, it's great for growing, but for personally, I think it it's the whole heartache of a lot of people and their relationships. And Tina, being an empath, you, mm -hmm. you probably can feel the sadness around uh, Victoria, around the world, and yeah. and even your children growing up in these uncertain times. Um, yeah, so uh, it's you can see the sadness on the streets, can't you? Christmas oh. just wasn't the same. Or New Year's Eve. It, it was all a bit different, wasn't it? I, it is. And I believe like two years we've had to actually program ourselves to be a different person. So for me when I was, I was lucky enough to be able to go out on the roads and from my other businesses and, you know, I could get out. But those people that couldn't, you know, mentally it actually puts a lot of pressure on them. So... I don't know, it's just a lot of people now have to adapt now to how life was, mm. to how life is. So that's going to take time as well. And, yeah, the streets and there's the uncertainty. Will we go back into a lockdown? I don't think we mm. will. But, you know, having that mental pressure and can I spend money? Some people don't have money now. So money's a lot of pressure on people as well. So there is a, definitely a lot of uncertainty that will take a bit of time for people to come out. And a lot of friendship circles have significantly changed as well, hasn't it? Because um, people have realised, hey, I'm not the same view of you and people are stuck in their, in their views, aren't they? Yeah, they are. And I find too, because um, a lot of people are judgmental and unfortunately and only my view but a lot of people watch the tv and then they're scripted in their minds of mm -hmm. you know we have to wear a mask we have to do this we have to do that but then as you said back in the day 10 20 years ago you're running around free you know you get in the dirt and you know mm -hmm. you live life unfortunately now we're being controlled and mm -hmm. i think that's why i just returned from thailand after quite a few weeks and 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 bali i think that's why people love the freedom of bali and thailand because um uh we're just Overregulated at the moment, it's yeah. uncomfortable, isn't it? Yes, I often go to Bali, you know, once twice a year. Take yeah. my children, like I just love it there. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. great cool. vibes and um, mm, third yeah. world country. But then look at the way they live, like yeah, like <laughs> yeah, that's right. And um, and they're far less judgmental than mm -hmm. Western society is very judgmental, isn't it? It is very judgmental, and I think a lot of people hide or put a facade of someone they're actually not. 
Mm. And that's hard too, living a life like that. If you can't mm. be yourself and you're trying to portray that you're someone else or you've got this and you've got that, but at home you're sad and alone. Mm. And I feel a lot of people are like that, unfortunately. Indeed. And uh, Tina, um, what do you do for fun? What's joy for you? Wow, I love going out, drinking, socialising, driving. Um, yeah, I also like going out to the country. My parents are from the country, mm -hmm. so from? fresh air, Beaufort, small country town. Yeah, well, you know, country Victoria, and then um, and then their daughter says, "This is what I'm doing." But uh, are they uh, with you now? Have you explained um, uh, what a white your, which, uh, um, your Not so much explaining. Um, with my family, they accept and you know yeah. support and everything that I do. Um, with my children, they see me practice at home. I've got an altar in my room. I've yeah. got unusual, you know, items that I've sourced all over the world mm -hmm. in my house. So yeah, they're very accepting. What's to the it. altar for? Altar is where I perform my rituals. Um, and to me, that's where I center and I just zone out from the whole world and, and do what I have to do if I want to manifest anything like I manifest when I'm moving around but if I want to do something strong and I want something to come in quick I use my altar for amazing that. do you get in touch with other witches um yeah I do bump into quite a few especially with having the shop we have a lot coming through oh really yeah I did join a little circle of one at one time it wasn't for me I'm more of a solace like I like mm. doing my own thing my own way um so yeah I practice are there many white witches yeah I believe there's quite a few and there's a lot more is it? Yeah. Um, it, and some don't, don't want to even uh, announce um, that they're a white witch. Some people don't know. I find that it's a fear of being rejected or the fear of, you know, um, just not being accepted. Mm. But, yeah, I, I'm out there. I say it now. I, I used to be the same. I mm. used to be like, oh, no, they're going to think I'm whatever, but I don't care now. Like, I just, yeah, I'm a witch. And Amazing. some people just look at me and that, and then, but then others are accepting. Oh, what does that mean? And then I go into you know conversation with them. Yeah, and and the uh, the business sounds great. There's a uh, um, there's a healing, and then you make people feel great about themselves. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, they love it's important, it. isn't it? It's important that self care is important, isn't it? Self care is very important, and I feel too. One thing that I do want to say though, like people think, oh, what well, come and heal me? But like a lady came in and I healed her, and she brought her son in unbeknownst to him. And he's looking at me like I'm a freak. And I'm just like, your son won't allow me to heal him. I don't want to waste your time. Um, you know, when he is accepting to this, um, please bring him back in. I'd love to work with him and I'd love to, you know, heal him. Um, and when people say healing, like it's not as if you're healing a broken arm. It's very energetic and it's a point of where a person may be. It may be past lives. It may be something that's bothering them within a relationship. It, it can be something that they're uncertain of. And I can work through all the body. Each body works on different areas, you know, of your life. You've got all your different chakras that you can work on as well. So depending, uh, if you contact me and doesn't happen all the time, I'll get a sense of maybe my throat will start hurting or I'll see a different colour or I get visions, I actually see a spirit or I may see something and then usually when I'm working on that person, I relate it back to them and it resonates with them with what I'm saying. So I tune in with the person. I don't do a lot of healings but I do do them, especially when I see a person's in need and, and they're hurting. I My heart melts for them and I want to help them. Oh, it's beautiful. And, and how do people... Re um what do they say to you afterwards? What's their feeling of um, release? Um, or? Well, one client I've had, she's been back um, numerous times. I was working on her and relationships in, in this area and I actually had a name pop into my head and I heard arguments in my head as well. And I'm like, wow, this is pretty full. And I got a vision of what the girl looked like. And when we wow. sat down, I said, look, I'm not sure if this means mm. anything to you. I explained everything and she'd actually had an altercation with this girl and that was her name. So I was like, right. wow, that was pretty freaky for myself yeah. too so I think the more that I actually do the healings um becoming more open and, mm. and more things are happening for me which is really good and you can probably sit with somebody for a while Tina and and, and not almost guess their name um I, sometimes no not really because no. I name it depends. It depends how I focus yeah. and what comes through. Like I can't control what comes through. Mm -hmm. It just happens. And like I get a sense of feeling or, or something. It's more for a situation. Like it differs for every person that I have. One girl I was working on and around her leg, I'm like, oh, I could feel pain and heat in that area. 
and she'd actually hurt herself prior to coming through. So, like, it doesn't happen for everyone the same. Mm. And can you feel sometimes that something bad might happen to them or something really exciting is going to happen to a person? Uh, not so much when I'm doing a healing. Um, I do readings. Um, I prefer a letterman deck. That's what I work with. Tarot, I work a little bit with, but it hasn't resonated as much. Oh, you but do those as well? I do, but not in the shop. I do them okay. for my friends. And thankfully, every reading that I've done has actually come into fruition. And sometimes I do get bad messages and coming through. It's just how you um, identify what it is and how you put it back to the person. Not everyone can hear certain things. Mm -hmm. um, with my family, um, I can tend to go into a bit more. But a person usually wanting a reading um, will want to know detail. But like, mm -hmm. I'm not God or I, I can't tell them exactly what's going to happen. And Tina, if somebody's really nasty to you, I mean really nasty, can you get a little doll and stick a, a, a needle in their bum? Look, you can, but that's something that I don't practice. Like no. I believe in white, not the dark side. I believe in threefold. So I believe whatever you put out there, you're going to get back. So yeah. I don't dabble in that. I've been asked to do mm. that numerous times. People in bad relationships, can you hurt them? Can you do this and can you do that? Mm. And I just like, if they're that type of person, they're going to get back what they're putting to you. You're so right. The best um Revenge is no revenge, isn't it? It is. And I think that too, like as much as it hurts and mm. you want to do it, trust me, I've been in that place a thousand times. Yes. But if you can contain yourself, hold yourself, you know, and move, move on, on, then it can generally yeah, pass. Thank you so much, Tina. You're a beautiful you. soul. And thank you very much, uh, viewers, your beautiful souls. Uh, love and best wishes. See you next week. Mm.